This week, scientists from Brown University announced the first successful human brain to computer wireless interface on SingularityHub.com. This ministry believes that this is the image of the beast and the mark of the beast beginning to take shape. Even if you don't agree and think the image and mark are something else, the idea of a computer thinking for you and impressing its thoughts on your mind, giving the computer ultimate control, <laughs> that should give you great pause. That is what we're talking about today and we're starting right now. Just two weeks ago, we released this video about the days of Noah being related to the Internet of Souls, something where all human minds are connected to the net, just like the Internet of Things connects your household appliances. And here, only two weeks later, we are being told that this isn't a pipe dream, but that the first human-to-computer interface was accomplished wirelessly. And an anonymous shout out goes to one of the members of our own advisory board who has been intimately connected to this industry for years. His quote on this issue is, it is the goal of every chip maker while touting all kinds of benefits to technology and human progress to make this happen. In other words, this human to computer interfaces the goal of all technology it is the final step as they see it in human evolution, moving from a biological entity to a mixture of man and machine, something that is no longer human. Yet to them, they see this as advancement and it will be sold to humans exactly that way. Just like Satan told Eve in the garden, you will be like gods knowing good from evil. This time, they will tell us we will know what the fastest supercomputer knows. And Satan's other lie in the garden, you will not surely die. This interface will be promoted to humans as providing eternal life, letting your brain live on beyond the life of your body. These are the two reasons that scientists are so interested in this technology. <laughs> but rather than providing knowledge and eternal life, what it will do is turn humans into a node or a workstation on the web, no longer an independent functioning being. We had questions about that topic in our last video and were asked, hey, if your DNA hasn't changed, aren't you still human? Well, the Bible defines a human as more than just a body and DNA. It defines it as a body, soul, and spirit combined. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. God expects our bodies and our souls and our spirit to be blameless upon the return of Jesus. Our material bodies are visible, but our souls and spirits are kind of less distinguishable. In the Greek, the word for soul is suke. This word implies our mind and our will and desires seen in our personalities and preferences. Our emotions, our soul is our mind, and this is what a brain to computer interface will impact and why a brain to computer interface will eliminate the chance for salvation. People always ask us, why is taking the mark of the beast an unforgivable sin? Why can't someone just take it and then repent? Well, if you no longer have control of your mind, if a computer is thinking for you, if you are nothing more than an unthinking workstation or node, well, there is your answer. The soul, in other words, the mind, will no longer be blameless on the day of Christ's return. A person's mind will be the mind of a computer if they take this interface. It is an irreversible decision to surrender your mind to the neural network, to the Internet of Souls. So let's look at what took place this week. Then we'll look at what we might expect over the next few years as this human computer interface expands and grows. Human brain to computer interface technology has until this week relied on wires that seriously limit its use. But this week, scientists from Brown University accomplished the first wireless version that also records brain signals using a device called an intercortical 
brain computer interface or a BCI. They implant electrodes into a patient's cortex and signals from these electrodes signal to an external computer. Of course, the scientists praise the positive advances of such. There are things like keyboarding without your hands and controlling robotic prosthesis and even moving paralyzed limbs. To demonstrate the potential of the system, the Brown University researchers showed that two patients who had been paralyzed by spinal cord injuries were able to use the device to control a computer, the cursor of a computer, and actually type in their homes rather than in a specialized lab. That is the positive news. A one-way transmission from a human mind to work machines. What hasn't been officially attempted yet is the reverse, a computer influencing the human body or what the mind thinks. Imagine the implications of that. One computer influencing how everyone on earth thinks and acts. We expect those kind of experiments, a computer telling a human what to do, to not receive any news coverage at all. How far away are we from this kind of thing? In September of 2020, Neuralink, launched four years ago with the backing of Elon Musk, announced a new brain implant that listens in on the brain's electronic signals and at the same time writes onto the brain with electrical pulses. <laughs> Understandably, the company has kept a really tight seal on the progress, conducting all its manufacturing, research, and animal trials in-house in complete secrecy. So apparently, this type of control is already available in the experimental phases. The prototype implant is about the size of a large coin. The device replaces a small piece of your skull and electrodes are implanted inside the brain and they connect it to the topical device. When covered by hair, the implant is invisible. I could have a neural link right now and you wouldn't know it, quipped Musk. <laughs> Pretty scary thought. In a news event, Musk's organization brought out three pigs with implants and showed that they could control the movements of the pigs with a computer. <laughs> that tells you exactly what the long-term motives may be of this technology, and that is control. But what if the implant was on your forehead with the name of the beast clearly visible? Would that be the mark of the beast? Well, perhaps. But frankly, every human on the planet isn't undergoing surgery. That's very unlikely. A more non-invasive means of placing the implant is needed. So what if nanorobots were injected into the human bloodstream? Another Musk company, interestingly, named DARPA, is working on minutely invasive biotechnologies just like that like self-assembled nanorobots that can reach individual neurons and control their activity. And all they need is an injection. These nanorobots could even piggyback on a benign injection. DARPA has shown in animal studies that controlling the activity of a single neuron just like this is sufficient to program artificial memories of fear, desire, experiences directly onto the brain. Can you imagine the effect that would have on the human population? Talk about rewriting history. You could make people believe that they had learned or experienced things in the past that never happened. In our recent video, a number of our community commented about how just such an interface that controlled human activity could explain this verse from Revelation 9. Let's think about it together. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. After being stung by demonic locusts of the fifth trumpet, unrighteous will seek death, but not be able to find it. How is that? Well, if they are controlled by a neural network that prevents them from taking their own life, that can easily be imagined. What a horrible situation. Revelation 18 tells us that Mystery Babylon is punished for practicing 
pharmakia or pharmaceutical sorcery. Is pharmakia what we've been describing in these last couple minutes? Click right here to keep watching and learn about this word pharmakia and how we might keep an eye on this type of sorcery in the future. Till then, this is Nelson and I'll see you there.